So at some point, your life will go to shit. And that's just what happens from time to time. It might have been a breakup. It might have been not getting to your dream school. It might have been losing your job. All I know is that what you do now is what matters most. So if my life went to zero all over again, I want to share exactly what I would do to rebuild it. What's up, guys? Alex Hine here over at Modern Health Monk. Now, before we jump in, I've put together a free seven-day self-growth challenge that will help you figure out exactly what you want from life and how to make it happen. So it's the first link right below this video. You'll get an email every couple days on how to design an incredible life going forward. So check it out down below the video. The first thing I would do is really mentally count out how far you think you will live. And I wanna share why this exercise is so important. When I was in grad school, I was doing my doctorate and I was talking with a girl one day who was basically complaining about how hard school was. And she didn't wanna study, she didn't wanna put in the time. And I was saying, you know, just put in like three hours a day and you'll probably do fine. And she said, well, no, I like going home and I like watching Netflix every day for three hours. I like that ritual, you know, after dinner from eight to 11, watch my shows and then go to bed. And I'm like, well, you could work a part-time job in those hours or you could study in those hours. But ultimately, she didn't want to give up her three hours a day of Netflix to get through a doctorate or grad school or medical school. I don't even know if she graduated. She might have dropped out. I never heard from her again after that year. But in less than those three hours a day, during my doctorate training, I wrote multiple books and brought a business from basic entry level into the six figures, all while doing a doctorate over four years. And yes, I am a psycho, and yes, I apparently like destroying myself, but the fact is, I did that in less than three hours a day, more probably two hours a day. And for her, she was watching Bridgerton. It's not to compare, it's not to say what she did was wrong and what I did was right. I'm just saying, if you wanna build your life, you have to be deliberate about what you're building. And I was very deliberate about what I was building and where I wanted to be in four years, not just with school, but personally. If you're 25 right now, just Google what is the average life expectancy for my gender in my country. So for me, a male in America is about 79. So I'm 35 now. You can do the math. But let's just say you're 25 and people in your country live to 75. So you know that you have 50 years left. And it takes about 10 years to acquire 10,000 hours in the field, which is the middle number it requires for mastery. Right, for let's just say being the top 1%, the middle number, average number. So you could literally, if you're 25, become the best, one of the best in the world in five different careers. You could have five different lifetimes from now, even if things went to hell for you. You could be the best in a STEM field, like a biologist. You could be the best in a sport, like tennis. You could be the best in an intellectual field, like engineering or computer programming. There are so many ways you could reinvent yourself and rebuild in just one decade. 10 years sounds like a long time when you're 25, but when you're 35, you realize how recent 25 was and all the things that you could have done in that intervening time. So wherever you are now, pace out how many decades you have left and how many things you could be the top 1% in the world in with your remaining lifespan. And you'll see that life is long if you live it right. The second thing I would do is come up with a list of, let's just say, 20 experiences you want to have in your life. So for me, my version of the bucket list was not like go bungee jumping and go skydiving, even though I did all of that. The bucket list of thing was just, what do I want to experience while I'm alive, right? And we're all going to die. We don't know if it's at 26 or if it's at 96. But either way, I think the difference is, what do you want to experience while you're alive? Right? I mean, it's the dreams that basically hold people together. If you just worked a nine to five that you hated, you had a boring relationship, you looked forward to nothing in your life, there would be no internal purpose for being alive. There would be no feeling of my life is worth it, right? And I think that's why so many people sedate themselves with TV or drugs or recreational drinking because it is a kind of slow suicide. But what experiences do you want to have? For me, one of the experiences I always wanted to have was I wanted to do a little sabbatical just for a month writing my second book, which is called Milk the Pigeon, A Field Guide for Anyone Lost in Their 20s. And one book that inspired me, that really inspired me to go after the life I wanted, not the life that was the secure life, the safe life, the life that my parents wanted, society wanted, but what I actually wanted was the book The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And I remember visualizing in my head all of these scenes of Southern Spain, like Tarifa and Gibraltar, and the boat he took from Southern Spain over to North Africa, and 
the visual of standing on that old fort in Tarifa and seeing North Africa across the strait there. And I thought, wouldn't it be awesome to write my next book, Tracing the Footsteps of the Alchemist? So one day in my little bucket list notebook, I wrote down, do a month in Southern Spain and spend every day just drinking wine and writing your next book. So because I had that intention that this was an experience I wanted to have, I actually ended up doing that about six years ago. And I booked a round trip ticket from Spain. I was an entrepreneur, so I could take the month off. And I went to Southern Spain and Portugal. Every day, all I did at sunset, I found a great cafe or a great restaurant. I just people watched and I just wrote this book that was the guidebook that I wish I had when I was 22 or 25. And that experience is a profound life experience I had that so many people I know envy or would love to have, especially people that want to write or creatives that want to think. And for me, the only reason that happened was because I actually thought about deliberately the kind of experiences I wanted to have ahead of time. Now, the final thing I would do is come up with your perfect day and try to reverse engineer it. Because look, when I went on this whole long-winded rant about your bucket list, but ultimately the things you do once a year or 10 times in your life will not make you have a happy life. Unless they're like finding your dream job or marrying a person that's a great person. Because your life is really comprised of your days, right? So as the quote goes, how we live our days is how we live our lives. So if you hate every day, but you have a sweet vacation two weeks of the year, you're gonna hate your life because most of your life is still what you hate. So what is the perfect day? I remember I was talking to this uh, successful fitness trainer years ago and he said that before Gary Vaynerchuk was this big person he is now, he hired him at a very high consulting fee to help him build a better life and better business. And he said the first thing Gary V said was, what's your perfect day? Literally, that was his first question. Not business, not big picture, just what's your perfect day? What do you actually want to do every day? And the guy talked about his wife and his kid and the hours he wanted to work and what he wanted to work on. And I think this exercise is so underrated because Today is your life, literally. Tomorrow is your life, Friday is your life, each day is your life. So if each day is awesome, your life's gonna be awesome. And if you hate five days a week because of you hate your job and you love two days a week, then you, you hate five out of seven days, that ratio, five out of seven of your life, right? About three quarters of your life you hate. So thinking about what your perfect day is tangibly, when do you wanna wake up? What do you wanna do for work? How many hours do you wanna work? How much money do you wanna make? Where do you want to live? Who do you want to be with? How often do you want vacation? Once a year, 10 times a year. You'll find people who are doing it. So if you think, what are those experiences I want in my lifetime? What are those one-off events that would be awesome stories? And then day to day on the micro level, what is the perfect day by itself? You're going to be well on your way to building a really incredible life and a really incredible quality of life because you've thought ahead of time, what is my dream life? And then you're backtracking to make that happen. So those are the three things I would do if I were rebuilding my life from scratch. There's also that seven day self growth challenge, which includes some journaling prompts on deliberately planning the plot forward and the path for building the life that you really want. So make sure you check it out down below. I'll see you guys, two other related videos for you there, and then I'll see you in the next video.